Mai Kako, welcome. I pray that on this day, January 16, 2022, that you have had a splendid and fantastic day. Thank you for joining us for this evening's chapel service here where we focus again on the value of aloha, one of our many values here at Kamehameha Schools. Before we move into the rest of our service though, let us offer up a prayer of thanksgiving to Keokua. Epule kaku. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, for this entire day, Lord, a day that we get to rest and relax. Uh, Lord, as we... Uh, have a holiday tomorrow to remember Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, as well as those of us here in Hawaii as we remember our queen, uh, Lili Uokalani, uh, as we remember the fall of the Hawaiian kingdom. Lord, we pray and ask that your grace continue to be with us, that you strengthen us, that you let us know that we are people of worth and value who are loved by you. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. Uh, as we close this time of prayer, we close by praying the prayer you taught us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. I aina mako no neyala. E kalama i ho ia mako i ka mako lave hala ana. Me mako e kalani i kapoe i lave hala i ka mako. Mai ho oku u o e ia mako i ka ho o vale vale ia mai. E ho o pa kele no na e ia mako i ka ino. No ka mea, no ke aupuni. A me ka mana. A me ka ho o nani ia a maulo aku. A mene. Please join us in singing Ho'onani.
Kaku. As I said earlier in our introduction, this week has been a week of aloha for us here at Kamehameha Schools at the chapel. Uh, we've been, since last week, Sunday, we've been talking a lot about love. Those of you that tuned in last week, we shared the story of Jesus and Jesus' baptism and how when God looked down from heaven and said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased, he did that even before Jesus did anything. In the middle of the week, we also put out a service. Not sure if all of you had an opportunity to watch it, but in that service, we talked about the two greatest commandments that God gave his people. Love God first, love one another. Before we move into the main part of our message for this evening, how are you guys doing at the task that we asked you to work on this week? How are you doing at loving one another? How are you doing at loving yourself, at knowing your own worth, your own value. We continue to pray for you daily here at the chapel as you endeavor as best as you can to be people of aloha. Today, though, I wanted to focus in first on a different kind of love, and this is the love of a sister. So growing up, I grew up with a lot of ear infections, so it took, it took me a while uh, to learn how to swim. It probably wasn't until the second or third grade where I was comfortable enough swimming on my own. And so growing up in a big family where we spent lots of time at the beach, everybody just kind of assumed everyone could swim. Well, I couldn't swim. And so one day we were at a swimming pool. Uh, my auntie had lived in an apartment complex that had a swimming pool and we were all just kind of playing and swimming. But because I couldn't swim, I was just kind of wading in the water in the shallow end where I could touch just playing by myself and just kind of doing my own thing. And my auntie started asking me, why are you only staying here? And so we started to explain to her that I couldn't swim yet. I, at this point, I was probably only about four or five years old. And so we started telling her that I can't swim, I can't swim, so I have to stay where I can touch because uh, this is the place that is safe for me. For whatever reason, no one believed me. And they came into the pool, they grabbed me, picked me up, took me around to the deep end, and then they just decided to toss me into the swimming pool. And because I couldn't swim, I just kind of sunk and whoosh, right down to the bottom, just me all by myself. And as the rest of my family was watching, for whatever reason, they still didn't quite believe that I could not swim. And they just thought, ah, one who will start swimming to the shore soon enough. He'll give in and he'll start swimming. But I couldn't swim. Well, my sister, who's a couple years older than me, watched this entire thing unfold. And she ends up being the one that jumps in the water. She comes to save me. And she gets into the pool and swims me up. But that wasn't the end of her story. Because as soon as she got me up into safety, realized I was doing okay, she marched over to all the other adults and all the other older cousins that were swimming and she screamed at them and yelled at them and told them, what are you doing? My brother told you he couldn't swim. Why did you throw him in the water? He cannot swim. My sister loved me so much that she decided to get into the water with me to save me. In the book of Mark chapter six, there's this wonderful story about Jesus. And one evening Jesus with his disciples, he decides he's going to send his disciples off to the other end of the shore alone. And so the disciples get into a boat and they start paddling for the other end of the shore. And Jesus stays behind to do his own thing. Eventually, in the middle of the night, Jesus looks and he observes that as they are trying to make their way in the canoe, that they're having a hard time. Scripture says in Mark chapter 6, that they were straining at their oars. And so they're trying to paddle, trying to paddle, not going anywhere, not going anywhere. Not a very fun night for the disciples. And so as Jesus looks, he realizes that they need help, but there's a problem, right? Because they're in a giant sea. They're not in a pool where Jesus can jump in and swim over to them. Well, Jesus has a solution. Jesus decides, ah, I'm just gonna walk over to them. And Jesus begins walking on water, but the disciples, who've been up for a while, straining at their oars, tired, it's dark, the sea's not so fun for them. They begin to see this image walking to them and they get scared, they get afraid. In fact, it says in scripture that they thought Jesus was a ghost. 
And as Jesus walks by them, Jesus realizes that his friends are terrified. And what Jesus decides to do in that moment is Jesus gets in the boat with his friends. And he tells them, take courage, do not fear. I am here with you. In the same way where me, being the young child, needs a sister to jump into the water to save him as an expression of aloha and as an expression of love. Jesus sees the fear that's in his closest friends and he decides to get into the boat with his friends. Jesus continues to do that for us up until this very day. Every day we go through the things we go through and Jesus is constantly getting in the boat with us. The difficult test coming up, the strained friendship that you might have, the dorm advisor or the resident life advisor that's always on you. Right? Different things make life tough right now and challenging and sometimes we feel like we are straining at our oar. Maybe some of you miss your parents. Maybe some of you miss your siblings. Maybe some of you, just in the first two weeks, are feeling overwhelmed by school. You feel like you are straining at your oars right now. This story in Mark reminds us that just in the same way that Jesus watched and saw his friend straining at the oar, he got in the boat. Today, the problems you deal with, Jesus sees them, and Jesus continues to get in the boat with you. This week, I'm going to ask you for a couple more tasks. Just a reminder that when we give you these tasks, they're not meant for you to do them in one inc week increment, right? So just because I'm going to give you new ones today, it doesn't mean you stop the, the one from last week. Continue to find people to love. Continue to love yourself. But in the midst of that, take on a few more challenges. Number one, get in the boat with someone. Extend an arm of grace. My sister was en aware enough to see a brother in help, and she loved me enough to extend an arm of grace. Jesus looked around, saw his friends having difficulty in the boat, extended an arm of grace to them. All those people that cause you stress, all the things that cause you stress, all the work that bears a burden on you, Extend an arm of grace instead of words of frustration and anger. Number two, be observant. My sister realized that I was in need of help because she saw me at the bottom of the pool. Jesus realized his best friends needed help in Mark chapter 6 because he saw them straining at their oar. Be observant for those who are in need of help and get in the boat with them. Get alongside of them. Tell them, do not be afraid. Take courage, for I am here. May your searching for ways to express aloha continue to be a fruitful search that leads you to people who know that they are loved because of the way that you express love for one another. Thank you for joining us for this evening's message. Before we close out our video for tonight, we invite you to receive our benediction. Let us receive our benediction. Na Yehova oye e ho mai ka i mai, a e maalama mai. Na Yehova e kau mai i ka maalama lama, o kona maka maluna i ho o. A e loko mai ka i mai a oye, na Yehova e maliu mai a oye, a e haave mai i malu no. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Let us receive God's good words. Epulekaku. Gracious God, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for tonight's reminder, Lord, for us to get in the boat, to get alongside of those who are in need and who need help. Uh, we're so grateful that you got in the boat for us, that you sent your son to die for us. And because of his death, it gives us the power and the ability to love one another so that people know you. As people continue to look at us and look at the things we do, may they see a better reflection of you. May they see more of you and less of us. Lord, we ask that you be with us throughout this week. Keep us safe. 
wherever we go, whatever we do, may we continue to be servants of God. Makai no kamakua, make a kiki, make a uhane molele. Amen.